Do I need a patent attorney to write my patent application? The quick answer is no. However, if you're going to write your own patent application, there are some things you probably should take into consideration. First, if you're approaching investors, investors are going to want to see the complete package of your preparation. And to quote the internet uh, guru slash entrepreneur Derek Sivers, a mere idea that isn't executed is not worth a whole lot. So if you are going to approach potential investors, they're really going to want to see that you've done a solid job in preparing for this. And if you show them a very poorly prepared provisional that you wrote on the back of a napkin and submitted to the USPTO with your $65 application fee for a micro inventor, they're probably not going to take you as seriously as if you have a well-prepared provisional along with um, you know, a statement from an engineer that the engineer has reviewed it and thinks this thing is going to work with a prototype that looks nice that was probably prepared by a prototype house that you have a business plan written out where you describe exactly uh, who's on your team, what you've done, what the status of the prototype and the legal work is at uh, and, and goes over a number of market factors as well. So the more you prepare to try to attract investors, the more likely you are to land them. Now the same thing holds true if you're going to try to license out your invention. Uh, the more protection you have on it and the further, further developed that protection is, the more likely you are to attract a, a licensee is going to offer you a good deal. So the first thing you want to consider before you decide to write your own patent application is the training that goes into becoming a patent attorney. Now becoming a patent attorney begins with your undergraduate college career where you have to have at least a four-year degree in one of the sciences. You then need to follow that up with a law degree. You need to pass the state bar exam and the patent bar exam. Now just because you have passed these exams it doesn't mean that you're a very good patent attorney. It just means that you can become one. It takes a number of years before you learn how to write the claims and you understand the patent application process before you really can do a top-notch job. But again, people are certainly welcome to write their own patent applications if they would like. And again, I would urge you to go uh, and do some serious soul searching and see where you fall in the continuum from a tinkerer to an inventor to an entrepreneur. The second thing that I urge inventors who are considering writing their own patent applications or for that matter, doing their own engineering, making their own prototypes um, and that kind of thing to consider is whether or not this is a business or a hobby. Now again, I think this is an important distinction to make. If it's a hobby, it's supposed to be fun first and profitable second. Now there's nothing wrong with having a hobby. I have a number of hobbies and I'm not necessarily very good at them, but I also don't expect to make money from them. Uh, when I run a business, I expect to make money from it and you as the inventor should look at things with at least the idea in mind that you want to be running a business and not have this as a hobby. Indeed, whether or not an inventor is approaching an invention like a business or a hobby is to me at least one of the clear distinctions between the term tinkerer and the term inventor. And if you want to approach this like a hobby, absolutely do your own prototype work, you know, do your own engineering, write your own patent application and just see what happens. However, uh, be realistic about it and don't expect to make a whole lot of money because the odds are heavily against you. A second thing to consider if you're going to write your own patent application is often with intellectual property, the mistakes that are made are not discoverable until it's too late to fix them. For example, in some of our videos on provisional patents, you'll see that poorly timing your provisional filing or indeed poorly writing your provisional application can be fatal to a later filed utility patent application. However, the fatality <laughs> is not discoverable until it's too late. And for more on this, you can see some of our videos on how to properly use provisional patent applications. Another thing to keep in mind is that you can't bluff forever. If you're going for investment money or you're trying to do a licensing deal, the pros prospective investor or the prospective licensee, they're going to want to see everything you've got. So they're going to demand a copy of any patent applications that have been filed. They're going to demand a copy of any prototyping records, any engineering drawings, and any engineering work you've had done on this. They're not going to trust your prior art search. They're not going to trust your opinion that this is patentable. They're going to do their own before they think of dropping a dime into this invention or into you as an inventor. So you have to approach this keeping in mind that before you see any investment money, you're going to have to show all your cards. And if these cards are dirty and torn, you're probably not going to get a whole lot in the way of investment money. 
Last but not least, I found that the successful inventors are usually good at figuring out what they're good at, and they're also usually good at delegating what they're not good at. The unsuccessful inventors that I've run into are often not a very good judge on what they can do well, and unfortunately they end up doing a lot of stuff themselves they should have other people doing. And at the same time, they often farm out work that they should be doing themselves to other people. So they usually misuse their money. So if you want to do the whole thing yourself, or if you don't have enough money to pay other people to do the portions of it that you should be delegating out, good luck to you, but at least try to keep these things in mind when you're going about trying to do it yourself.